What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here, and today we're going through the next steps in provisioning prep, as well as customizations and probably file syncs. Uh, and that will be a pretty decent amount of this video to get us even more ready for actually deploying the nodes. And like I said, we're just kind of chopping these up in the small videos so that they're easy to, to consume without too much worry. Um, we're following the open HPC guide as always, and we'll see you over there. All right, and we're back on our system. If you remember, we did um, the the node image prep as well as some werewolf prep, and now we're gonna be doing a little bit more of that. So the first thing is going to be, uh, we're gonna init the werewolf database. So it's turning on its MariaDB database, it's creating its user, its root user, getting all that prepped to store information about your compute nodes and your cluster and the configurations that you want Werewolf to, to maintain. Um, next, we're gonna be doing deploying the SSH keys. This is going to allow SSH um, login without username and password to compute nodes if needed. So let's prep that up. It's got that all, all built out. Next step is going to be for network shares. So on a system, we will configure the home directory and a separate directory, which I'll show in a moment, to become NFS mounts to the compute nodes. So that if, when you're running a job, a lot of times when you're running a HPC job, you keep input files and, and data files and things like that in your home directory or possibly another directory, that directory needs to be able to be mountable to all compute nodes so that those machines can reference the data uh, to, to run the job, to understand what they're supposed to be doing. So you, you set up the home directory for that and then OpenHPC suggests using this opt OpenHPC public folder. And we will use that to install our software. We will put all of our scientific software inside that folder at a later date when we do another installation piece. So now those are set up in the Truths etcfs tab. So the, the compute image. And then we need to configure the host, the head node to actually offer these up. Now, obviously you don't have to do this from the head node, you can have a storage node that mounts these, but then you need to make sure that this is also mounted on the head node as a mount point as well. So there are lots of different ways you can do this. This is just the most simplistic. Uh, and like I said, we're pretty much just following it verbatim because I know it works. And then we export all, export FS dash A, and then we restart NFS server. Now I also saw something a little strange when I rebooted the machine. So I'm gonna check that real quick. Yeah, this did not start for some reason. So let's check, let's try to restart it. Oh, that's different. <clears throat> it just has failed to start. Hmm. We're gonna have to work on that, but for right now, we won't sweat it because we don't really need it yet. Uh, we wanna keep going with this regular. This next thing is a customization that I like to do. It is not required, it is optional, um, but this line here basically tells the system, if a user isn't running a job in Slurm, so when, you, when a user runs a job in the Slurm scheduling software, it records the user ID, the job name, what it's doing, like a short description, where the run file is that it's following and all that, and it logs it. And this will allow those folks, if they need to, to SSH to a compute node. But if no one's running a job, they can't SSH to a compute node. I like to do this because I run into situations where researchers will forget that they've SSH to a compute node and start running a job and it fail and fail and fails and they complain and say, hey, that's broken. When really it's not broken. <laughs> it's just that they're on a compute node. So it's just easier. To, to not have them think about that. And some places don't even allow you to SSH to them at all. Um, but I'm okay with it on my clusters to let them go if they're running a job there so they can take a look at the system if they want to. The next thing we're gonna be doing is what's called um, basically Werewolf file imports. So these are files that Werewolf will monitor on the host system. And if they're updated on the head node, they will then get synced up to the compute nodes. So we obviously want to do Etsy password, Etsy group, 
Etsy shadow so that their passwords are saved. Now, if you're wanting to do something like authenticate via Active Directory or some LDAP system, you don't need to copy those unless your, your LDAP system is actually storing the passwords locally on the system. Mine doesn't. I use SSSD uh, with Active Directory so that user accounts exist but don't have passwords. So I don't copy that Etsy shadow file. But, you know, if you needed to. I actually have all of my compute nodes talking to Active Directory. And then the munch.key. So if for some reason you need to reset the munch key, you can do that with this. And that is the file syncs, the pr provisioning preparation, and uh, our optional customization. That is pretty short, so I think we'll sneak in a couple of more steps real quick. So first thing is we're going to set another variable called werewolf wwconf, which is going to be our bootstrap config file. And then we are going to tell it to do this, which I'm going to need to read exactly what this does again. Let me check that line real quick in the, in the guide. Here we go. Include drivers from kernel updates needed if enabling additional kernel modules on compute nodes. Okay, so I do this, I guess, just as an in-case thing. This is just for drivers to allow kernel modules if we need anything for, for different scientific software. And then we will bootstrap. Now this will tell Werewolf which kernel we want to bootstrap off of. So you can store multiple kernels in there if you need to. So it'll look at the kernel that we've set previously for the provisioning. It'll figure up what all of that kernel needs and what it references and all of that. It starts building all the stuff for it and it's done. And then the next one is to build a VNFS for the, the image we, we created earlier. So it's still called Rocky 9.3, even though it's using 9.4. That's just a lazy documentation issue for me. <laughs> this will take a few minutes. So this will probably get fast forwarded in editing. Okay. So now that's done. Um, I want to take you inside the actual werewolf system a little bit because all you've seen is me dumping commands to the console and then an output and sometimes not really even an output. So if you ever want to check out werewolf, you just type WWSH and you're in the system. Now, I don't remember the commands off the top of my head, so I'm going to have to type help. Okay, so there we go. So I believe if we type something like bootstrap, for instance, it's going to give us some info. So if we do bootstrap list, we should see the bootstrap that we made. There it is. And then if we type, for instance, um, is it, oh, it's VNFS list. That was the VNFS we just made. So that's the image, the ISO. You can think of it like that. Think of it like a bootable ISO or, or a, you know, something like that, where when Werewolf detects a node, it will say, what image are you supposed to get? What bootstrap are you supposed to get? And then we'll have that listed and then it will dump it out. If we do file list, those are the files we configured. You can set permissions in here. So like maybe the file on the head node belongs to root, but on the compute nodes, you want it to belong to somebody else. You can change the configuration in here, I'm pretty sure. So if we go to file help, you can, yeah. So you can set a given name, you can set mode, you can set, um, if you, maybe you call it one thing on the head node, but you want to call it something else on the compute nodes, you can do things like that. Um, you can delete, you can list, you can set it to nodes. So if we do node list, there's not going to be anything in here. If we do, let's do help again so we can see what else we can look at. So the DHCP, let's try update. Now it restarted the DHCP service there, which is interesting. Um, you can configure your IPMI in here, which you should do. Uh, since we're running virtual machines, we don't have IPMI, so we're not worried about that. But if you're running hardware, physical hardware, make sure that that's configured in here so that you can remotely manage all of your compute nodes from your head node. And of course, you also need to have IPMI for your head node uh, so that you can manage it remotely instead of having to walk into a data center or anything. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's see, what's in Pixie list? We don't have any nodes yet. So if we go node help, it will give you commands about something like that. So the next steps are actually going to be um, building nodes out, but that's gonna be for our next video. So get ready for that as I'll show you the commands OpenHPC gives and how horrendously unreadable they are at first glance and kind of how I do it. And also discuss Werewolf has the ability to scan for nodes, which 
uh, we could give it a shot and see how it works, but it's kind of messy, especially if you try to turn on all your nodes at once and turn on node scan and it just kind of grabs them willy nilly. I'd rather not do that. So that's it for this one and we'll see you in the next one.